Today we're covering a simple ping and email script with PowerShell. Let's go. Hey there, welcome to Tom's Tech Show, and I do many kinds of videos all around the internet. Um, and right now I'm going over kind of doing some different videos on my LG V60 that I got. I didn't get the dual screen, um, but I've got video, more videos on that coming because um, it's kind of doing more in-depth kind of stuff as to how I have it set up and maybe some more settings. Um, I also have the uh, new Orville comic that I picked up the other day. So I've got a, going to be reading this and making, you know, a video on the Orville comics that are now coming out. I'm very excited. I also have the, oh my gosh, the Star Trek Next Lower Decks trash fire episode. So, I mean, if you want to head over to uh, Tom's Tech Show channel on YouTube and just click subscribe and you'll get all the videos that I make. Um, also, if you're only interested in one subject, since I do videos on many subjects, just head to the playlist. Uh, then you can look at, so you want to check out all the technology videos that I have. There's a ton of them up here. Maybe a subject is interesting you, just browse through them. There's one's on AWS, there's one's on PowerShell, there's one's on just Windows in general, um, all kinds of things. So makes it pretty easy having the playlists just to find what you want on my channel. Go ahead and click subscribe and I would appreciate it as all your small channels that you watch appreciate these subscriptions. Okay, so let us head over to uh, this script here. So I like in my scripts to set up all my variables that I'm going to use um, right from the beginning right exactly from the top. So this is all kind of the things that you need to tweak in this script in order to you know, monitor the IP address that you want to monitor. So we have our email address that we're sending our alert to, the email address we're getting the alert from. Um, I'm using Gmail as my SMTP server and there's some special things we have to do to get that to work. Um, and we want um, SSL and as, uh, Gmail uses 587 as the SSL port. And then it's going to be requiring a login, so we have to set that to true. And then we have a login email, and then this is going to be something that we have to get, which is an application password from Google. Okay, the script is pretty simple. Um, we, I, to make it easier to put the output into the email, I just define a constant here called new line, which is the line feed carriage return characters. Uh, so we start with the down count being zero. So as far as we know, nothing is down. Um, and that's the list of the down items. So then we're going to write host. We're going to put the, print the date on the screen so we can know if we're watching this on the screen. Then we can say, okay, when was the last time this was run? Is it stuck? And then we're going to get uh, our ho list of hosts. So I have a text file here that just has some hosts in it. Uh, these are just some local IP addresses. Okay. So if you notice here, there's a pound sign in front of this one. If I do the where object match pound sign here, that's excluding those if, if it's not, doesn't have a pound sign in it. So it's gonna exclude all the ones that have a pound sign. So it makes it easy to comment them out if you don't. If you wanna leave them there, do some maintenance and then, and then put them back. So here's our main loop which is we're going to just do a for each loop in my host list for every host name in my host list. Um, I had to add another little test here, um, the host name dot length, because if I happen to add, you see there's these extra spaces here. There's a line four, there's a line five in the file. If those are there, then it's not gonna read it as a host and there's an error. So I had to add another test to that, making sure that that line that I'm checking is greater than zero. Length is greater than zero, so I know to check it. Okay, then I do the test connection. This is a PowerShell command, test connection, which is the same thing as, you know, your basic Windows ping. And when I'm gonna do it up against the host name, count, do it one time, and then silently continue. We don't need any output, we're just, we're adding that status to this host status. So if the host status is good, then we're just gonna write out okay and the host name, give it a dark green background, a white foreground, makes it real easy to see if you're watching it on the screen. Otherwise, we're gonna write down, put the background color dark red, foreground color white, 
increase our number of down items by one, and then add that host name to an array of down hosts. So if there's more than one, it's going to keep track of those. It's going to increment our down count, and it's going to add the host names to a, an array that allows us to write that out and send that out in email at a, down here. Okay, so we're going to write down host down count. So we're going to tell right on the screen, this is how many hosts are down. Uh, and if it's greater than one, if our down, we have more than one host that's down, then boom, we want to send an email. So our subject for our email is going to be there are down count hosts down. So it's right away you're going to see that in your email. Then uh, we're putting some comments here, down host, so we're adding a little line in the email. This is just going to be a text email. I'm not going to convert it to HTML or do anything like that. Uh, then for each item that's down, so for each item in our down array that we had, um, we're going to print that out and add that to the body of our email. So it's going to print the down count, down hosts, give a list of all the hosts that are down in the email. Okay, so we need to connect to our SMTP client. So all these variables that we had set up in the top up here, we're now using down, down here. So our SMTP client gets set up with our server and our port number, and we are enabling SSL, and then we're requiring login. We set that flag up top, so we're requiring login, and that gets us our login name and password. Then we just simply say SMTP client send, email from, email to, subject, and body, and then reset our down count to zero. So hopefully that the next time it goes through, it actually catches the host is back up and is able to be uh, accessed again. So after that, we're gonna pause for basically 30 seconds. I have just a little loop here that just prints some dots on the screen to let you know that it's just not hung, it's just there, it's printing these little dots out, and then it's gonna write a new blank line to the host so that we clear the line so we go on to the next uh, set of uh, hosts that we're going to see and then at the end we're just going to do a while true and just keep this loop going we're not going to stop it until we come in and say control c um, and and tell it to stop i want it to keep going because i want to know what hosts are down um, okay so let us do one thing so here this smtp pass so in order to have gmail send your alert email through the gmail smtp server you get an s a uh, i create like a utility type um, email account in gmail and then you have to go in and do a few things so let's go here so here is my utility account and I, you have to have two-step verification on on your utility account. You can't use your utility account password in the script. So you have to turn on two-step verification, verification, and then you have to add an application password. So I have to log in here once I click this. And I will click go here. And let's get my password here. Copy and... There we go. Okay, so now we're in this application password screen. So we can select an app, which is mail, calendar, contacts, YouTube, whatever kind of application you have. We're gonna do other, because this is going to be, I'm gonna call this ping notify, and then I click generate. Now this generates this application password. It doesn't really matter that you see it, because once this is done, I'm going to delete the application password. So that's kind of why they, they do it. They want it to only be set for one application. So this one application is going to get this password. We'll just copy that. And here where I have this password, I will paste that and boom, you don't need to worry about the spaces. They can be there. They don't have to be there. Um, if you want to put them there for your own clarification that it was, if you typed it in, it might make it easier for doing that. But now I hit done. I go back to this screen. I see I now have one application password. And that allows the script to access the Gmail SMTP server with this account. So if something happens, the script gets compromised or anything like that, you just come into uh, 
your security settings, go to app passwords and delete it. And then now that will no longer work. So that's kind of the power of that. Okay, so let's run the script and we'll see what happens. Okay, here's my PowerShell. You do have to have uh, your execution policy set to uh, remote signed or bypass in order to run scripts. So uh, that I've already done. Um, so let's go start. Let's click here and go start monitoring online. So it finds my hosts that are in my host file and sees those, pings them both. They're both okay. I have down host equals zero and you see my pausing. And it's printing a couple little dots there just to let me know that it's it's actually doing something. I kind of like that little dot thing where it's like, okay, are you doing something? Is something happening? And especially when you have a longer delay, like 30 seconds or a minute or five or 10 minutes in a script, definitely put something with dots in it that let you know I'm alive. Okay. So what we're going to do over here is we're going to come here and I'm going to uncomment this one host in the file here. Let's come back here. So we're pausing, we're waiting, I've saved that. So every single time this loops through, it reloads that host file. So I can make changes to that host file without having to restart the script. The script can be running. Uh, I can put the host file you know, on a network drive or something so that anybody can access it uh, in the network. And once this gets to the end, it's going to pop, read that host file. Oops, and we have a down host. So now I should be getting an email that shows and I just heard my phone go off so that means I just got an email all right so let's go bring that up okay so here's the email that I get it's showing me here there are one down hosts and then it gives me the list of down hosts here which was the 192 168 6 I actually even typed it horribly wrong just to make sure that there was nothing on my network that was part of that so that's telling me that this host is down. Then we can, I can keep track of the time it went down and you know maybe there's some other things that are going on on our network that you need to be able to to see, get track time and things for when things go up and down and be able to log that or whatever you need to do for like reports or anything like that. All right, so there's that. So this is all working and uh, the key thing is getting, the, if you're going to use Gmail, if you have a local SMTP server, like without authentication or anything like that, then you can just, you know, don't require a login and don't worry about the login and password. Um, and you can even set SSL to not be, to be false. And then just set this to 25 for the regular SMTP port. If you have your own local kind of SMTP server. All right. So there you go. That's how you can quickly and easily set up a PowerShell script to ping hosts on the network or websites. If you want to keep track of websites as well, you can put in a, a, a domain name in that hosts file, host text file, and be able to connect, make sure your web servers are up, you, they're connectable for the, your network, um, all kinds of different things. So that was quick and easy, but um, it's really useful and I found it to be uh, something I use more and more often, just that simple little, is this thing alive? And if not, just send me a quick message. I need to know kind of thing. All right. Well, thanks for watching this. Take care.